welcome to Two Women Chatting with Liz and Michelle. Enjoying life in our 50s, we're also empty nesters, looking to reinvent, reset, have fun and talk about topics with experts and friends that affect us, our kids and our families. So grab a cuppa and join us on the sofa for a chat. There's always room for one more. We're not tech savvy, but we do our best. But it's a learning curve. All bumps, clicks and noises are our own. Come on in and have a seat. Well, I've been really good this week, as you know. I've been my personal trainer. I my know, that's first awesome. Time. Do you know, I've never, ever thought in my life I would, what do you do, take on a personal trainer? Yeah. But Why not, though? Because I just thought I wouldn't need them. But then I realised I actually go to the gym, don't actually do anything other than just sort of stare at the machines and cycle a bit on the lowest level. And I thought, I've got to do something about it. I'm feeling positive. I know the sun isn't shining all the time at the moment, but it's definitely spring. I feel much yeah. better and I've gone through it. I know, I feel like... I- I've lapsed a little bit and tell you what I got on the on the scales and you know those wretched scales I got where they tell you the metabolic age yeah I've gone up 10 years oh don't worry I told my age to the personal trainer and after I went oh that's not my age it's what what my scales tell me (laughs) so I'm determined before I go away on holiday in 10 days I I said this every single episode. I will, yeah, in in, remarkably, in the next seven days, I'll (laughs) drop 15 pounds. But I am going to try, I'm going to try juicing. This is my new one. Oh, yeah. (laughs) You do. I just go for sensible dieting, but actually don't do anything. I go for drastic, crazy stuff. At least you try and do something. Yeah. Well, my husband's away and the kids are away. So I don't have to cook, really, do I? So this seems like a really perfect time to lose weight and have... Yeah, you know, just juicing stuff. Yeah, I've like, never tried it before, and I'm not, I'm not brilliant at keeping to diets. So, did oh, no, you know not. that? That's <laughs> funny. I never have guessed that. But I think it's 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 the way you do it, and I think you because you, you do everything at 100 mile, 10 miles an hour. That's your problem. Well, not a problem. <laughs> so it's really rude, <laughs> listeners. I didn't mean that's not a problem. But Michelle does have a habit of taking things on and I'm, taking them on and taking them on. I'm and full on. Full I know on, that. Yes. And doing yeah. it, so to speak. So you, you perhaps sometimes think... We're a bit like the tortoise and the hare, aren't we? We both <laughs> yeah. get to the same place, but at different speeds. Yeah, I'm much slower. But I... you oh, my stomach. I'll, you see, you, I'll please, I had breakfast this morning after my last experience. Breakfast? You don't have to listen to my no, stomach I had this time. Too. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah. Blame it on the dog. No, it's the dog. It is the dog. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, Macy, Macy is right in there with her... the microphone. With her snoring. Yeah. But no, 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 it's not a problem. But you, you, I think with you, you you are trying to find instant hits. Or, yeah. Was it instant hits? Instant results. Yeah. No, yeah. I don't yeah. think... Uh, exactly. I get to the point where I'm so frustrated, I just want immediate results. It's because you're so busy. No, yeah. you're right. I think it's t- probably a bit to do with lifestyle and the way I run my life. And obviously, it would be better to do something that's more regular every day just part of your life if you go on a diet and it's you know three days five days seven days and then you go back to your normal eating habits and dare I say drinking habits you do then of course you're just going to put it back on but I just want to put a swimsuit on no but you've had the you know you've had an operation it it, it takes time to recover from that and at our age it's harder to lose weight and it's not say losing weight it's making yourself feel better I feel better with myself my one personal training session which is actually lying down which I thought this is fantastic because it was all more Pilates but next morning I couldn't move really yeah so it's a different way of it but I feel better inside that's all I can explain yeah well I've gone back to tennis now with my tin hip and I'm I'm perfecting granny tennis which is actually something that I've always wanted to do because you know you know when you see women on the tennis court they're in their 60s or their 70s and you think, oh, yeah, this will be all right. This will be fine. But they're so brilliantly, you know, targeted and strategic and they barely move. And they well, thrash you. Yeah. And, oh, yeah, they totally thrash me. So that is that has always been my ambition to play good granny tennis. And I think, you know, I've been forced into it. So I'm, I'm hitting the ball to the right places without moving much. But, and this is embarrassing, it's the first red-faced, sweaty state of fitness I've had in two years. Because of my hip. And I've realised that all the walking that I've done, which is good for me, all of that, that hasn't revved up my heart. It's not and given me cardio. It's good. It's good to walk. Yeah. As you know, I walk a lot, but it doesn't, doesn't, it's just 
pleasant. It's not. It's good, but not good for you. Yeah, but honestly, it felt so. It felt so good to look disgusting. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. Because you've done something. I've actually achieved yeah, some exercise. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and I'm going to Pilates tonight as well. Oh, so I see. there you go. I, that's what I'm doing in my. Well, yeah. I've got mine on Friday again. So I'm going to build all these things yeah. in. It is. It's the core, and it's true because it helps everything else. Helps the back. Helps the the neck. All your weak points can help you. Help. Talking of aging. <laughs> I mean, I, I hate to fangirl here. <laughs> oh, go on, go on. But You're you know, not talking about me, are you? No, I'm not talking about you today. <laughs> I'm so excited to talk to Anthea Turner. Yeah, I How know. How cool is this? I mean, her hairstyle, her her vibe, her style, her zest it's, for life. It's just everything. It's her look. Yeah. It's just, yeah, it's something I aspire to. Yeah. Along with Fisty Kendall. Oh, yeah, she's She's, she's the same height as me, that's why. Whilst Anthea's taller than me. Is she, well, how, how tall is Anthea? Then? I don't know exactly. She's more than four foot nine. Then. Yes, she is. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, I'm five foot and a bit, <laughs> and I'm with my Pilates. I could actually get to five oh, foot yeah, one. Oh yeah, you could. could, could, you? could, could stretch. <laughs> You're saying that I could reach six foot. I'd hardly think so. Yeah. Very excited because she's written this new book, How to Age Well: The Secrets. And what I really like about it is she's specific. So I know that if I went to a dinner party and poor Anthea was sitting next to me. I would say, what moisturiser do you use? What do you do? Where do you go? Where do you shop? What do you use on your hair? How do you, you know, I would ask her all that. I would, I would totally interrogate her. And luckily in this book, (laughs) she does give specifics and she's really, she comes across as really authentic and... um, And honest. Honest. Mm. Yeah, I like that. It's not just uh, buy my book and gloss over all this stuff. She's, I like the honesty in it. I, mm. I felt like, um, and it's also a great dipping in kind of book. Yeah, I read it cover to cover. Yeah. Which I wasn't expecting to, but there's some really good stuff in there. It, it's it's a good one to just pick up and, and like go to one chapter or another chapter. And she's got some really nice experts in there as well. So, oh gosh, look at the time. <laughs> We've done it again. Um, <laughs> Too busy chatting. <laughs> we probably should chat to Anthea we now. Should. I've got my toes on my dog. I'm just gently stroking her because she's got a collapsed trachea. And in every <gasps> podcast, you can hear her snoring. <laughs> oh, you might you might get so sorry. He's a bit comfy at the moment. So I just sort of might I'll bring him round. So, my, so mine aren't allowed in. <laughs> mine are too big. Yeah, they'd be all over the place, wouldn't they? Oh, there he is. Hello. That is cute. Well, welcome, Soho. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we always have to say the disclaimer at the beginning of this that I'm sitting on the settee at home and Soho is on the settee. He's a French bulldog and he makes weird noises, <gasps> as you can hear. Not actually kidding, are you? <laughs> chit chatting. Chit chatting, chit chatting. Yeah, it makes Maisie sound quite quiet. <laughs> So we should probably, I mean, we obviously know who you are, but I think it's probably fair to say that our listeners in the UK, they don't need an introdu- introduction to you. Liz and I have basically grown up with you on our telly, but we've got lots of listeners abroad too. So Anthea Turner, once named Queen of Breakfast TV and the best dressed woman on TV, has been a children's TV presenter on Blue Peter, anchor GMTV on The Morning Sofa, presented the very first National Lottery been the only non-Radio 1 DJ on Top of the Pops, the good old days, taught us how to be organised way before the home edit and Marie Kondo, I'll have you know, learned to ice skate for Dancing on Ice, lived in the Celebrity Big Brother house, and learned to do crazy skiing on the reality show The Jump, you must be mad, and (laughs) threw herself backwards out of a helicopter on Celebrity SAS during lockdown, and more recently enjoyed a bit of dirty dancing on the reality show. And well, we that's are, it. It's, that it's, is my career. <laughs> it's really embarrassing. We're such fangirls. <laughs> We're like, yeah, oh, my so God, funny. we spent ages on our hair this morning. <laughs> and then they got squished. Yeah, then we put the headphones on and, yeah, the Dyson, all that work on the Dyson doesn't show anymore. But, you know, you've had a stellar career, <laughs> haven't you? Huh? Oh, no, but, oh. Dear God, Lou, she's not the microphone over every time, man. No, it's not every time. <laughs> You are funny. I'm not good at this. She's a natural, as you can probably tell. I'm not. I just talk a lot, is what I do. But, you know, you've had a really stellar career, obviously. But, you know, let's face it, it hasn't been up without its ups and downs. And, you know, I think very unfairly, often tabloids have really obsessed about your relationships, both on TV and personal ones, which have been covered extensively. We don't have to go on about that. But here she is, looking amazing as ever and ready to spill the beans with your new book on how to age well. 
And you're literally the best advertisement for your book, really, because you're a poster girl for <laughs> having vitality and a zest for life. So please spill the beans. We want to know your well, secrets. Goodness me. Thank you very much for saying all that. Actually, I was I was talking to Anne Diamond about sort of the long careers because, I mean, we've both been around for quite a long time. And we decided the most important thing is we're still here and we're still doing it. <laughs> so it all came down to that. So, do you know, uh, obviously, I, I've written a book called How to Age Well, The Secrets. And it's not a huge book because I don't think people want to be sort of thumbing through some massive book. Um, I think you just want to sort of dip in quick. Give, give me give me give me 10 things. Mm. So the, the sad fact is when it comes to the secrets, that isn't just one. You go, oh, right, that's it. Thank you very much. I'll. I'll move on now. It's a whole collection of things that you do which fit into your life. Lots of little things. And they help you live a better life. And it's to do with, you know, health and well-being. People talk about well-being a lot, don't they? But, you know, a lot of it's to do with well-being. The elixir of youth is not in a pot of cream. It is in your attitude to life. But what I've never wanted to be is what I refer to as a self-saboteur, somebody who is sabotaging their own good health. And most of us, you know, if we've been lucky enough, we've been handed from a child, you know, we came onto this earth healthy. I know we can't legislate for all the things that are going to happen to us and accidents and things like that. But generally speaking, you know, we're, we're given this good health. But unfortunately, a frightening percentage of adults over the years sabotage their own health with lifestyle choices now I'm not monastic about this at all I you know I work most mostly on the 80 20 rule if you make 80 percent of your decisions are good ones then you've got 20 percent the cake the wine and all the little naughties that we all thoroughly enjoy and make life worth it so I think it's I think it's that and I and I think as got, as I've got older I have done that thing that you always, when we're younger, we always laugh at older people for doing because you're very worried about your health. Your health becomes top of your to-do list. You start thinking about your health more so. And I know that when I tipped 60, you know, my 60th birthday and I was during lockdown, it was, oh, yeah, 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 yeah that's fine. You know, you're not going to notice a huge amount of difference. But what I did notice was what was actually then going on in my head more just during the first year of my 60s, because it's all very kind. You know, people can say, oh, don't worry. You don't look your age. And, you know, 60s, the new 50. Well, it's not. It's not. 60 60. And if you start to do the maths and you live to the national average and you say goodbye to this mortal world somewhere in your 80s, frankly, you haven't got that long. <laughs> you know, you've got to make the best of it. So I think what we do do is, and whether we discuss it or not, I, I, I'm not sure. I don't. I, I think we try not to, but actually we can see our mortality, and we also then see we start to look at other people. And I know that my parents, who are still with us, and they're in their um, late 80s, early 90s, but you actually start to see where the tipping point is, even if you've known good health when people start to really slow down, get ill, think things happen. And I and I, all I want to do for myself, and we, honestly, you know, you can be diagnosed with cancer tomorrow. You don't know there's Parkinson's. I mean, there's a whole list of things that you can get. But don't be a saboteur. Really don't be a saboteur. And it comes down, sadly, to what goes in your mouth and how much you move. Yeah. And those really are the two most important. They're coming cosmetically. We can do all sorts of things, you know, from our haircuts and depends on the gene pool that you were given to start off with. And, you know, we can colour our hair and we can do, do this, that and the other. And, you know, I've always said I love, love a bit of Botox. I haven't really frowned properly since I was 40. <laughs> and you can have all the facials and things. But I felt like, no, but, and, it, and it's not done to the degree, but it's, you know, it's not done to any frozen degree, but it does help. Mm -hmm. And, so, so I think, what was I talking about? I'm wishing on about. Am I? I'm going on a bit now, aren't I? Really, um, no, going on about that, that. You know, you can, but, but a huge amount, unfortunately, <laughs> is lifestyle. You know, you can't be smoking. You can't be lying out in the sunshine. 
too much without reasonable protection on. Although I have, you know, I could have been a lot better in that, on that one, but I've had some great holidays. You, you know, drinking, I drink, but it, you know, it's moderately. So I tell myself now that if I have a Pinot Noir, which is, has got the lowest sugar contents, red wine's obviously better for you than white wine. Let's just keep going with this one. And if it gets all these, all the goodness in it, all the goodness in mm, those that's grapes right. that's for our nice. immune system. But of all of the red wines, Pinot Noir has the lowest sugar contents. So that's the one we can have. So that's why I've lost some weight. Yeah, they, I've been drinking Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir. Oh, yeah. exactly. I've just been drinking yes, vodka. Go that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's actually 20%, you see. Um, so you still got to have fun. But, but I, I think it's, they are, they're just, it's lifestyle choices and, and moving. And this is not, you know, you haven't got to be a slave to the gym, but we do need to, because whatever aging you can see on the outside, because we have a mirror and we can look at that, it's happening inside as well. We can't see that. So we sort of tend to not forget about it and not, you know, not acknowledge it. But our bones are aging. Our muscle tone, mm. we all know our muscle tone is not quite what it used to be. I didn't have to, in the old days, I didn't have to do a lot to keep my muscle tone. Now I have to do a lot more to stay the same. And then, of course, it's how many hours are there really in the day to dedicate to this. But I know that it's not how long you live, it's how well you live within those within those years. And for everyone's well-being, and that that's probably what I preach and I was doing a, a podcast with a really good friend of mine, Liz Earl, and we, we sort of sing from the same hymn sheet uh, on that one. Obviously, she's so successful in that arena. And you know, it's not preaching. It's just she, she genuinely always wants people to live a better life and to ward against. You know, we know what's happened just lately you know, with, with COVID. And the tougher you are going into a problem, the better chance you are of you have of standing up the other side and getting out of it. And I think that's important. You mentioned Lizelle. I just want to return to that because yeah. she was one of the earlier people to really talk about gut health, wasn't she? Oh, gosh, yes. Yeah, she yeah. was. She was going, banging on to me about it for such a long time. In the end, then she introduced me to a lady called Shan Nix. And Shan Nix uh, runs a goat farm in Wales. And she... She's an American lady. She's, she's worth getting on your podcast. She's an American lady who fell in love with a man who had a goat farm in Wales and, but also had psoriasis and, and gave birth to a son who also had the same problem. So she started thinking there's more to these goats than meets the eye. I think they're going to heal us. And she started doing her research. Anyway, she, she understood the, the correlation between your brain and your gut. Uh, and your gut, and frankly, most things on your body. I was li- oh, I, di- I di- digress. Stop me doing that. Because I was listening to this thing. It was Jeremy Vine. It was on Radio Two, and there were people were talking about people who have psoriasis and have acne and all sorts of skin problems. And nobody really, really talked about the gut. They talked lots of topical things, topical, lots of things you can exactly. do. Exactly. Mm. No, it's it, you know, it comes from inside. So I am a big one for the kefir. And the you know prebiotic and probiotic, and I uh, I do worship at Shan Nix's altar, and it was Liz actually who got me into this. But also now, what it does is, I did. If you can hear noise upstairs, it's my spin dryer. I just I I, I put it on, and then suddenly you're like, oh, I'm going to speak to you. Oh, spin dryer. Um, upstairs. Yeah, I'm more I, 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 just, I know. I live in a townhouse, so it, it's. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, it's it's sort of up just stairs. Tell you, tell you what, my quads since moving here. So, uh, what was I going about? That since uh, gut health. You take collagen at night too, don't you? Oh uh, yeah, and well, yeah. Uh, I think collagen, collagen again. Everybody say, oh yes, it's just for your skin. It's not actually. You know, collagen is the building blocks of just about everything. And it's it's why we see ourselves age because we're losing it, um, mm. and it's why all of a sudden we go, oh, my knee hurts or my you know my arm hurts. It's 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 the collagen disappearing. It's not necessarily it is wear and tear, but generally it's your reduction of collagen in our body, and we are losing one percent a year. So obviously by the time you get to your fifties and sixties, you've lost quite a lot. 
Mm. So and then it speeds up, I, doesn't it? In menopause, you lose exactly. even more. Thank you so much. Um, so yes, yeah, so I'm I'm definitely slugging back the collagen, uh, the prebiotic, the probiotic, and I think that, and I think they they all they all play their part. You know, nothing's a magical cure. You still have to have a, a well balanced, good diet. And I think once you start really thinking about this, I do look at a piece of food now and go, oh, dear, is my gut going to like this or is it going to throw a hissy fit? I still have the, the cake, obviously, um, and think, well, I just have to it'll get over it. But but in moderation. So that's that 80 20 rule. It's all the time, yeah. Isn't it? And just go, no, what do you want yeah. to do? Do you want to feel healthy? Do you want to jump around? Do you want to carry on? you know, thinking you're 30, or do you want to start? And we do, we see people and people who are in our age group and it's always twinge and whinge. And I don't want to be like that. Mm. I'll do I anything. Like twinge and whinge, Not, I like the twinge twinge and whinge. Twinging and whinge. Yeah. Whinging. yeah. I've seen you on Instagram with your, I do like going off on the bike. I do, but I'm, um, I'm pathetic in the fact that I keep to the river paths. And I'm fortunate to live on the Thames, so it's surprisingly there's quite a lot in London. You can go a long way in London without not getting yeah. anywhere near the road. So I'm very good on river paths. And then I do and then obviously we have loads more cycling lanes now, which if I'm when I'm a driver, I hate them. And when I'm on a bike, I think they're great. <laughs> <laughs> Same as me. It's so true. <laughs> But I'm a fair weather cycler. I, I don't do it. Oh, yeah, same here. Yeah. Oh, my goodness me. If it was raining or it's cold, absolutely not. And I've got a bike now that no self-respecting thief would ever be seen dead on because it's mint green with a basket on. And you just think, ah, I, I feel safer because I've had a, a couple of bikes pinched and I was really mortified at that. Uh, but now I've got a big, a, you know, a real sort of, Oh, girly bike girl's bike oh it's such a girly bike <laughs> yeah you'll so be doing nice. uber eats on that or anything would Yay. you <laughs> <laughs> one of the things liz would do you remember you, you out of the book you were saying about the multitasking oh yes i, I oh. it's fantastic you take the dog for a walk and you've got weights on your ankle yes i do in fact oh. around the house because i've got stairs I use two kilogram weights. Uh, if you're going to do this, don't use any more than two kilogram. I know you think, oh, two kilograms, not a lot. But actually, if you go any heavier, you can't propel yourself forward. I can still run upstairs. And it really, really helps. I've also got, as well, a weight vest that's six kilograms. And I have a dog, like lots of people do, our fur babies, we take them out for a walk and they sniff every blade mm. of grass. Obviously, I rely because I live in a city on the parks and Soho's nose is down. I mean, it's not a walk. It's just a Soho sniffing session. So thanks to COVID, what's happened is that people don't feel idiots working out in outside <laughs> doing their squats because we got to do it at COVID. And that's where we went to do exercises and things. So you see lots of people performing, you know, their various different contortions in parks now. And not feeling silly about doing it. And so I, yes, with these two kilogram weights, you know, I can do leg raises, um, the the vest. So it just puts a bit more pressure to help my bones, really, because I had a DEXA test and found out I got the little beginnings of osteopenia. And so I, I make sure I take vitamin D now and I do more weight bearing exercises. Vit um, we did we did a podcast pretty much all about vitamin D, how important did, that is. Yes. I, I take it as oh, a spray every day on my again. tongue, mm -hmm. and you found oh, out yes. that you were deficient. Yeah, yeah. So I do the spray. It, it's vital, yeah. isn't it, to take vitamin D, isn't not it? just in the winter, but year round. All the year round, so absolutely much. Absolutely take it, and obviously the wonders of HRT. I was very lucky that in my early fifties, I, I went to see a doctor who prescribed me tranquilizers after I'd explained to him my symptoms, my voice, and thankfully didn't take them. And then went again and just happened to see another doctor. And she said, you don't want tranquilizers, you want HRT. This was, you know, obviously a little while back now. So we didn't have the body identical HRT. So it was just a sort of one tablet fits all. So, but I was, I count myself lucky to have gone on that quite early on and not had that horrific dip that unfortunately mm. some people suffer with. Thankfully, in the last 10 years, more so probably in the last three, 
the subject is talked about. Yeah. I'm still surprised that only 20% of menopausal women are actually taking HRT. And the thing is, uh, HRT isn't about hot sweats. It's about monitoring and stabilizing all your hormone production, of which we need from our hair. Oh, the anxiety muscles, as well and the sleeplessness. Everything. So when people say, oh, I don't think I need HRT because I don't have hot sweats, I get maybe you do. <laughs> I wonder what the stats are of people who go on HRT and just never come off it. Because once you have that sense of of confidence coming back and being able to sleep a bit yes. more. Did you see that interview just yesterday with Lisa Snowden? And it makes me crazy. The trolls, and I know you've experienced a lot of nasty people being making yeah. spiteful comments, but Lisa Snowden sort of broke down. She was doing a podcast or something and she was crying or maybe it was Insta Live. She was yeah. just saying how today was a rough day, really hormonal, yeah. crazy menopausal yeah. day. Yeah. I was reading some of the comments, oh, get a life, you know, get over mm. it, just go out for a w-. So unkind. I just don't think people realise how no, it how takes bad it over you like a demon. Yeah, did you have it? Did you have it? Yeah, I did. I went on HRT. I, yeah. I, was sweat- I was having hot sweats like 28 times a day and I wasn't the nicest person to live with. <laughs> <laughs> Now I'm amazing to live with. <laughs> no, I, it's the brain fog with me that's been the real issue. Mm. You know, I just forget everything. I forget my Yeah, mind. so are you, and you're obviously, you're both on HRT now. I'm not are because you? I have yeah. a blood clotting problem. So I, was right. I couldn't go on it. I think it's probably yeah. changed now. But as I'm, I feel, you never get through it, but I, I feel I'm get, definitely coming out the other end. Yeah. But well, I, I, I say, you know, everybody is individual about, about this. And so, you know, there's, there really isn't a one shoe fits all. But I, I know the majority of people that I have spoken to, their life has improved so much with mm. HRT. Obviously, the statistics that we did used to have some really frightening statistics, but actually they were all being proved to be non-existent, really. Yeah. And also we have to think of our heart health which HR, HRT contributes to, the blood pressure. You know, if you're on HRT, you're never going to be on statins. And and I think now, you know, the, the tiny percentage of ag- aggravated cancer is really very tiny. And mm. I think you have to look. I know I I took, when I, I read the various statistics, I think you just have to take an overall view, really. And do like your research, it? because it's do, not, do as research, you said, it's not a one... View. It's not a one size fits all because I, I think no. you said in the book that you started off on one kind and then yeah. you know as your body changes and you go through different Absolutely. years, your needs change and your hormones will you yeah. know rebalance and so on. Yeah, but it, it it is worth, and I think this is where you have to take responsibility for your own health. I've now got a marina coil because my progesterone levels dipped. By having that, it means that it's getting straight in. It's not going via it, you know, a tablet into the Britex filter of my my system. So I'm getting the progesterone exactly where I need it. I only take I take two pumps of estrogen. I don't need any more. We've you know checked all my estrogen levels. Um, so it, it's a constant thing to check. But I think you have to be quite proactive. I mean, I had to make sure I had a Dexa test. Nobody's going to say, "Would you like one?" Not necessarily. What's that? What, this is the, the your bone test? test. It's your bone oh. test, and it's it's worth having, and it will tell you whether you have a you know you have osteoporosis because most of us don't know really until you're somewhere in your sixties. You fall over and you go, I shouldn't have broken my arm. I didn't really yeah. hurt myself that much. So it is worth having one of those tests just to check where you are, and you can get it on the NHS as well. Oh, it's really? Not is that a blood yeah. test? You don't, no, they don't no, need a piece of no, bone or anything. No, no, it's it's like an X-ray. No, oh. <laughs> so it's, it's like oh yeah, they took my head. They could have tested that. <laughs> <laughs> so you literally lie on this unit. It's like a scanner. It's like you're having an X-ray, oh, but they're okay. X-raying your bones, and they will tell you the density of your bones. And I um, never knew you could do yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm gonna. I would advise any woman who uh, menopausal especially as you sort of you know you're in your 60s we should really be having them in our my utopian world of medicine then everybody would have have them late 40s early 50s and monitor your bone density because then if people started taking vitamin d earlier 
and started doing weight bearing exercises, we can alleviate those. We could alleviate actually the NHS spending so much money on broken bones, mm. yeah. uh, which is a phenomenal really- amount of over 60s who break bones. It's because of osteoporosis. And it's been unaware. I, you know, I read your book and I'm going to give it to my daughter who's 23 because everything in, is in that that I should have told, been told by my mother, not criticising my we mother. We didn't know yeah. it. Then, we did didn't we? know. But, you know, it, the hands. <laughs> yes. You say, I don't put sun cream on my hands. Why not? It didn't yeah. dawn on me. <laughs> it's unreal. And also, would you your hands around? You know, these little yeah. digits there. I remember it was Bruce Forsyth who used to say, he used to lie in bed and every morning we'd do 50 little star hands. And I do 50 to keep my hands moving. Little really? 50 stars. And I do, uh, and I, you know, do you think you're sitting down watching the television? Rotate your ankles. Do little yeah. star yeah. hands. Mm. Um, which I am demonstrating now. Star yeah. hands. <laughs> Rotate your ankles. Just keep everything moving. It's the constant move. And yeah. absolutely. And it's like, you know, what the, the first thing my dog does in the morning is he stretches. And he rolls around the carpet and he, he and you don't need an app to be able to do this. Get on the bedroom floor, have a good old roll around and stretch like you're a cat or a dog. Go to the limits of wherever your arms will go to. You can do it on the floor. You don't need a class to do it. Nobody's that is watching free. you. Yeah. So you can you can do any contortion you want to. See how far check your body. See how far do my legs go? How far can I move them? There are, if anybody's done yoga, there are those bands that you could just sort of push it that little bit more. But it's to keep your, it's to keep yourself supple, because that's what we lose as we get older. As we've talked about, it's the collagen and things, the decrease of everything. But just to keep as supple as we possibly can, because actually, if you do trip and fall over and you're supple, you do bounce a lot easier. You get up a lot easier. You get up like a child. You know, they never seem to hurt themselves. They fall over all the time. They don't hurt themselves. So all of those things are important. But one thing I was going to say I noticed about you, and uh, apart from clearly having this sort of vitality and, and, and energy, actually, or there's an energy about you for sure, but also it's the sense of humour. And is that how you have managed to be so resilient over the decades of your career? Because you've had some, you know, a, a few things thrown at you here and there. And in the book, <laughs> yeah. lovely advice from your mother saying, stop crying, put your makeup yeah. on, get out of bed dress nice yes. but then call me back yes. so do you think how important do you think humor is i think well humor of course and being able to laugh at yourself because many things have happened to me and some obviously have been of my own doing really or decisions that you make it sounded a very good idea at the time but probably not the best i think i'm um whether you believe in star signs or not you know there's we, we it's all a bit tongue-in-cheek but i I might, I often say I'm a typical Gemini. <laughs> it's just sort of, right, okay, then what do we need to do? Let's move on. Let's sort this out. I think the get up and scrub up and get out there. And somewhere along the line, probably the job I chose to do or I fell into really um, has made me get up and scrub up. And when you do that and you look in the mirror, you can deal with a lot more. I think it was Margaret, I don't know if it's Margaret Thatcher actually came up with it, but she did say 50% of the job is looking the part. <laughs> and I do think this is quite true. And I know that even if, you know, I, I'm doing a, po- a podcast with you and I, and I could actually still be in my pyjamas or a tracksuit, not put any makeup on, but I thought no, because I know that I don't, I need to, to do that. And I think we learned a lot of, actually we learned a huge amount about this working from home. I've always worked from home. So I've had to have some sort of discipline. But you can't, you do need to get up and scrub up. And it doesn't matter if you're making a phone, having a phone conversation, doing what you're doing, meeting somebody, I don't know, sorting out the problems of running your home, your your business, your life, your job, your kids, going to school, having to go and, and meet somebody. It doesn't matter. Whatever it is, you actually are able to tackle these things. Not in your pajamas. You can't yeah, the pandemic has really 
you know, it's the whole elasticated waistband, wearing your yoga pants everywhere, no makeup, yes. and yeah. or, or just wearing the shirt and wearing the yoga yeah. pants below. <laughs> I think we, we've all done that. We've all done that. And no, we yeah, we've definitely all done that. And I, and I do think you know, I, I'm one of those people who most definitely will put my sweaty betties on, and I've no intention of going to the gym at all. But it's a look, and in an odd way, it makes me sit better, stand better, move better. I talk in the book about the Alexandra technique, which is, and it is honestly my firm belief that if you can, if you do everyday movement correctly, you don't need to spend so much time in the gym. And the simplest oh, way idea. of Bring it. explaining Bring it. this is, is, you know, stomach exercises. Oh, I just have 50 sit-ups in the gym. Did you? Well, it's really lovely. I can honestly say, I don't think I've ever done 50 sit-ups. But if you're, if you're listening to this podcast, it's just a little thing you could just do now. Stand up and put your shoulders back. And I mean put your shoulders back. If your shoulders are back, your your hands have to be at the, at the side of your body. That They can't be somewhere <laughs> on the front of your thighs. So as soon as you put your shoulders back, you engage your core. You can't yeah, do anything I might else. knock the microphone with my chest. Yeah, but... <laughs> so your core engages as soon as your shoulders go back. It is, it is physically impossible to slouch and engage your core. So you put your shoulders, it's the simplest thing. You put your shoulders back, you feel, you're like Iron Man. You can feel then your core, which is your stomach, the muscles in it have to engage. And then you walk and walk properly. Walk like a postman. Walk with meaning wherever you go. Keep those shoulders back. And you are toning your body every step you take. Look at women in Africa who are carrying something on their head. They can't slouch. They've got flat stomachs. Mm. They've had children. Mm. They can't slouch because the water or whatever it is is going to fall off their heads. They don't have gyms. There are lots of people who, and maybe this is because I had a, a bit of a, a background of classical ballet. So it, it, there, there's a muscle memory there somewhere. But I say to go and do the Alexander technique. You, you'll find a, a teacher. You probably have to do only a few lessons because actually you'll say, I get this. Right. A little bit of pilates or do pilates or, or yoga but actually start to become bodily aware don't slouch don't slouch lucy oh good old lucy clayton stand oh, up lucy yeah. Clayton. Yeah. Yeah. do you remember yeah. lucy clayton i always know oh, all those girls who were walking like they looked so beautiful didn't they oh, so obviously we, mm. we didn't have that in stoke conference <laughs> but walking around with books on their heads but all it does is put your body in the correct position to walk, I see people running and I want to go stop running now. You do better just walking properly, using your legs, using your quads, using your feet. There's amazing things that hold your entire structure up and using them properly, using your calf muscles, walking correctly. And if I'm sitting in an airport or somewhere where I'm just watching shopping center, you're just watching people go past. This is the unfortunate thing. Nobody walks properly. Very few people walk properly. So the easiest way to do it is to put your shoulders back. You have to. You, you can't do anything else but propel yourself forward properly. And, I feel like and I just started to... this podcast in a slouch <laughs> and I'm ending yes, and about now, five foot five. <laughs> there you go. And you yes, say, what's, you know, what's, what's, a, what's a lovely, you know, little beauty tip to walk into a room? Stand up straight and smile. And it is the law of attraction, then, isn't it? That's so oh, that's so He obviously agrees. With <laughs> yeah. what I've yeah. Just said. So, so there, there's, it's just, and it is. It's all these little tiny things that just become second nature. As I say, even yeah. if you're, you're sitting down, you're in a chair, and I see, you know, a lot of people who are not able to stand up, and they still. I am obsessed. The Paralympians are utterly oh. amazing. And you look at them and you just think, what are you made of? How brilliant are you? The adversity that they have. But I it just, you know, you can, you can do so much for your core. Just even sitting down, you can do so much for You're your doing core. doing that now. Yeah, no, you I'm, I am. Now. Probably helps your digestion too, now. doesn't it? Well, like I would imagine a bit more so. space. Yeah. That's it. That's why, that's why we're not supposed to really or really do like it every so often. Sit and eat on the sofa hunched over a tray no, not good you actually do need to be at a table because it helps your digestion there is so much that i wanted to ask you and i feel like you know well what we'll do is go on for hours what we'll do is i'll come on again 
when you will think you've got to think about what did we cover and then come up with 10 questions and I won't just oh, go that's... on I'll answer easy, your easy. questions <laughs> <laughs> we'd love to have you on again oh we really would it's been such a joy <laughs> that's lovely and so nice to see you she was so nice oh she's my like best friend she's our bestie i was so hoping she would be the girl next door that she appears to be and she is she's she, so nice she is literally like your best friend yeah that was just, that was okay we're raw <laughs> early learners at this whole interview malarkey but god she made it easy fantastic you're so nice yeah. so uh, are you sitting nicely oh, yeah, i am yeah I'm, I'm gonna be an inch taller by the end of the week i really really enjoyed that and honestly her book is we're not just saying it her book is really good and i think it's probably good for any age isn't it well as i said it's it's, not, it's i'm gonna give it to my daughter because she needs to know what's in that now and start putting spf on her hands <laughs> yeah and that oh my gosh liz and when you <laughs> when you tipped over the microphone <laughs> it just fell no, because you thought I'd been drying my hair with a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> you said you Dyson. <laughs> I just love the way we look really professional in front of our guests. Yeah. We could be TV presenters, <laughs> <and> not. <laughs> anyway, that was so much fun. And uh, we've got and a couple of copies fun. of her book um, called... How to Age Well Secrets. And we'll be giving those away on our Instagram, at Two Women Chatting. Hop on to that and um, hopefully you can win a copy. Yeah, and see you next time. Yeah, that was so fun. Thanks for listening to Two Women Chatting with our special guests. If you enjoyed this episode, it would mean the world to us if you left a rating and review. Even better, share with your friends. And please get in touch. We'd love to hear from you. There's a link on our Instagram bio and Facebook pages. 